so you want to get better with your money in today's video i will be sharing five simple and smart money habits to help you keep on track to building your wealth and meeting all your financial goals. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you are new here, my name is Lucy. Our channel is all about personal finance, investing, and all things money. So if you're interested in any of those topics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell. These habits have helped me shift my mindset around building wealth, and what good money habits really look like. It does take a while to get used to some of these habits, but these are just things that that I have learned along my financial journey so I wanted to just share with you and hopefully it can help you in some way now let's get right into it first is stop wasting money you don't have a lot of people including myself have made this excuse before I can't invest or save my money because I'm broke but somehow they have money to buy a brand new car brand new phone brand new computer brand new Gucci belt brand new designer wear what I realized is that we need to stop spending money on things that don't help us build wealth assets on the other hand are things that can help us make money so instead of buying things a, vac a nice vacation nice clothes nice cars, nice technology, and new equipment. Think about reinvesting that money into assets that can actually help you grow your wealth. As someone who wasn't really great at managing money in the past, I have learned from that mistake. Back in high school, I had a part-time job working at H&M, and I did this pretty often. I would always get paid two times a month, and I didn't work that often. I worked part-time maybe 10 hours a week. Every time I got paid, that paycheck directly went back to the store because I ended up buying clothes that I didn't need. And this became a really bad habit because I was working to try to earn more income. But at the end of the day, my income went straight back to H&M because I went to buy more clothes. One of the major reasons why I did end up buying so much it was because employees got pretty good discount. I got 25% off all items working around clothes i'm just tempted to browse and tempted to shop that was a bad time in my life where i didn't really budget very well i didn't really know how to manage my money even though i didn't have much money to begin with and then so after that i stopped working in retail that wasn't the only reason why <laughs> i realized that i need to start putting my money towards things that can help me grow my wealth and that includes stocks real estate cryptocurrencies like there's so many different assets and avenues that i could have invested my money instead of clothes that i wear maybe a couple months in a year and i get rid of it and it really just goes to waste the second money habit is understanding that i can live off of passive income now the difference between passive and active income is that with active income it's like a nine to five job or you working on your business where you have to actively contribute your hours to earn money if you don't work then you don't get paid on the other hand with passive income you can earn money while you sleep it's your money working for you. So if you needed to stop working, your money is still working for you. I know, such a crazy concept. In the past, I've always thought the only way to make money was to always work for someone else and to work my way up and slowly increase my income that way. But slowly did I realize that is not how the rich people work. What's really nice about passive income is that you get paid over and over again. You could be contributing a lot, ton of hours at the beginning, but the reward is that the, the asset or whatever you're investing in does passively work for you. So you can stop working and you still get paid. A good example of this is real estate investment. If you do buy a property and let's say it's a thousand dollars every month for the mortgage, interest, taxes, and insurance, and you are renting that house out to a family that's paying you fifteen hundred every single month. Now that's five hundred dollars in passive income. Now, if you decide to become a property manager and manage your own rental, there are going to be additional work that will need to be done. If you hand off the property to a property manager and they manage it for you, then that's pretty much straight through passive income. And even while you're sleeping, you're still earning that $500 every single month. If you decide to stop working, you're also earning that $500 every single month. And ultimately, my goal in this is to have passive income that can pretty much pay for my lifestyle. So I end up not needing to actively work for 
money. And imagine if you have one rental property that, that earns you a profit of $1,000 every single month. If you have five properties that earn you $1,000 each every single month, that gives you $5,000 in net profit every single month. And let's say that you have 10 properties that did the same and now you have $10,000 every single month. And what you really have to think about here is how many assets do I need to acquire so I can get to that point? And this is where a lot of people get it all wrong. They look at how much money they're currently making, whether that be 50,000 or 100,000. And they think about how big of a lifestyle they can have living off of their income. But instead, think about that 50,000 or that $200,000 income you have. Think about how many investments can I buy every year so that I can live off of the passive income. Once your passive income covers your lifestyle expenses, then you are pretty much financially free. And you can do whatever you want. You don't need to have a job if you don't want one. And your active income, which you can decide to still keep, is just the icing on the cake. You can use money as an extra way to buy more assets. And that doesn't have to just be real estate. It could be stocks, it could be cryptocurrency. The ultimate goal here is to use your active income, funnel it to build more passive income so that you can live off of this passive income and choose to work your active job or not. We have to think about how to acquire these assets that help us build these passive income as quickly as possible. And this is one of my biggest goals is so that I can buy more assets to get to a place where I have a good amount of passive income to cover my lifestyle expenses. And it's always good to keep myself busy. So I would prefer to still have my active job while building my passive income stream. Money habit number three is understanding the value of my time. If you really think about it, time is limited. There is only so much time you have in a day and after you use it, that is it. You don't get that day, hour, month, year back. On the other hand, you can continue to earn more cash. You can continue to build more assets. That's something you can continue to acquire in the long run. But time is something that we can't get back after it's been used. I grew up in a very frugal mindset. So pretty much always thought about ways to save money, finding the cheapest deal, or going on the internet to browse for the best deals, hours and days. And so I realized that, you know, a few dollars may have saved me a good amount of change for me to use for something else, but is it really worth my time to be searching up the best deals to save a dollar or two dollars here and there? We have to all decide how much our time is worth. Is it worth 10 hours an hour? Is it worth $20 an hour? Then we decide on whether or not these things are worth our time. Just remember that time is the most valuable commodity. It is the only resource that you cannot get more of. Money habit number four is investing in the long run. I remember when I first got started investing, which was senior year of college, I was on Robinhood and I got super excited because I heard of this new trend called day trading. And I wanted to get started. I heard people were making so much money being day traders. And so I was like, you know what, let me give it a try. Maybe I don't need a job if I can make a couple hundred or a couple million dollars from day trading. Badly enough, I did not make that happen. Now, obviously there are people who do make a living off of day trading and trading, Forex trading, all that, um, but it's a very specialized area and you need to put a lot of work, effort, you need to constantly be looking on the markets. And so it's, it is a lot of work to get to a point where you can make a lot of money at day trading. I honestly was just not making money from it. I maybe just didn't know the concepts and couldn't find the right stocks and didn't really understand, but I did not enjoy what I was doing with day trading. But ultimately I realized that, you know, for most of us investors who are not actively on the markets, keeping watch, it's best to invest for the long run. It's already historically proven that investing in the long run has a higher return on investment. What's nice is that you have time on your side. You put money into an investment and you let it go. You're not constantly looking at it. You're not changing anything to earn this income. And in a few years, 
maybe a decade, you could see the potential return from that investment. And a lot of people don't like this because, you know, they want to follow what's trending. They want to see what's, you know, what's super hot right now. What's the best way to invest? And that is totally fine. A lot of these are just trends. What's popular today may not be popular tomorrow. But if you invest something for the long run, for example, a company that you actually believe in based on the values, the product, their services, your money will be able to compound over time because you won't pull that out right away. You're leaving it in there to see how far the company will go. And the last money habit is understanding the value of learning. A few times already, I've always gone back and forth with ed education and going to college. I wonder if I had not gone to college, would I be doing something else? Would I be better off? Would I be worse off? I've always had this constant push back and forth on whether or not you know, going to college really brought more understanding and knowledge and brought me to where I am today. I think education and learning goes beyond the classrooms because that is something we can gain in the classroom, but a lot of the life lessons I've learned in college wasn't actually through the classrooms. It was actually through lessons I've learned outside of school, like my internships, my jobs, my extracurricular activities. And, and there's so much more to it than what you learn in the classroom because there are life things that you can't just teach from a textbook or sit in a classroom where your professor just lectures you. All the ways of building this knowledge and understanding because we constantly need to learn new things, constantly need to understand what's going on and constantly to just grow our mindset. A few things that I like doing is listening to audiobooks, reading ebooks, watching YouTube videos on other people's experiences, whether that be real estate investing or building wealth, the fire journey, just seeing things that they have overcome and mistakes that they have made so I don't end up making the same mistakes. And these are all things that I wouldn't have known if I didn't pick up that book or if I didn't watch that YouTube video. So I think education and learning is a part of our natural abilities. We need to constantly grow. And the one way to do it is to absorb as much information as we can. Now that is it, the five smart money habits that everyone should know. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like videos about personal finance, investing, and building wealth, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification bell. Now check out these videos here on investing.